Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the new Pyrotech Kraken. Now, this has uh, a really interesting feature, and by now, you know, most of you know, uh, but uh, my, uh, my viewing audience pointed this out during the unboxing, um, and that's one of the benefits of doing unboxings blind is that, uh, you know, people who know can, can share this stuff, but um, the scale here is actually removable and is held on with magnets. Now, I, I made that look very, very easy. And I think for a lot of people, the, the initial concern is, is the scale actually going to um, be able to hold on there? And until I figured out exactly how to get that off, um, I was actually having quite a bit of trouble. The amount of effort it was taking to get this scale off was is crazy. It's uh, a very specific amount of force in a very specific spot. I'm keeping my fingernails, as you can see right here, I'm actually having trouble repeating it, but keeping my fingernails on the titanium scale and off of the liners and then pulling up any other force from any other direction will result in the scale not releasing. And I don't know if you guys saw on the inside there, let's pull it off a third time. There are four magnets holding this thing on there. This makes disassembly and maintenance very easy. Access to the other side does require that you remove this screw right here. Um, but also the uh, the little filler tab um, is, is basically just being held into place with lips of titanium here. That's also removable, making, um, you know, swapping the pocket clip very, very easy. Um, but essentially um, maintenance and disassembly is made, or just access to the internals is made much more convenient um, by the fact that this is magnetic. And that's really, really cool. That's one of the main highlights here with this knife. There's some other stuff, definitely some stuff that I want to talk about, but I wanted to showcase that right away. And by the way, <laughs> you would think it wouldn't be solid. It is. It's it's extremely solid. It, it, I, I just really thought that, you know, when I, I realized what the deal was with this knife, I thought there's no way that that is, that all is, is a graceful system, right? It is. It's very graceful. Um, thank you so much to Pyrotech for uh, sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. They've already released the first run of these, but are currently working on the second run. Now, if you're watching this on the day that I upload it, uh, you'll be happy to know that I believe the second run, the pre-order, is December uh, December seventh at nine p.m. The link for the website will be right down in the description, so you guys you guys can go and and check out. Don't be alarmed if it immediately says sold out. It says that before the pre order, right? Unless you're watching this like in the future, in which case it probably is sold out. But uh, yeah, make sure that you read there the exact release time. I think it's nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time on December seventh, something like that. <clears throat> this is the second run, and they have become slightly more expensive. We'll talk about that. But yeah, if you uh, are wanting to pick this up, you can definitely do that. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get some specs, measurements here. Overall length of the Kraken coming in at about 7.65 inches. Blade length, three and a quarter on the dot. Cutting edge, three and an eighth on the dot. How about some size comparisons? Any custom scales you see here can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. Up, up against the uh, 8010 and the 8020.5, definitely much closer in overall length to the 8020.5. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? You can see here, once again, much closer to the size of the smaller one. And then last but not least, up against the Benchmade Group Tillian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. And the Hodeca, definitely more of a Hodeca sized knife. How's the action? I wanna make a comment on the overall appearance here. This is kind of, it looks like the Sebenza and the Benchmade 940 came together and had a magnetic baby. <laughs> <laughs> this really looks like that. And you know what? It's like the best possible outcome of that fusion. Uh, really, truthfully, the action is spectacular. And, you know, taking that uh, scale off and putting it back on multiple times always results in the same thing. Completely and totally solid lockup, easy disengagement with no stick, and absolutely swing shut action. That is just really, really good. I am uh, I am a huge fan of how this 
is coming together and, I mean, coming apart and going back together and all the while remaining centered and locking out solid. It's, it's really just great. These also come, and by the way, on the website, there's one thing I read that I was a little bit confused about. It said the Axis lock or the, the Axis style lock has piano core string. I don't know if that means they're making the Omega Springs out of, out of piano wire. I, I'm not really sure. But the ones that they have that it, it comes with are plenty good, about medium. And then what they've included here, they feel like some high-tension Omega Springs as well. So unconfirmed on the material used. But it's nice that they offer an additional set of Omega Springs uh, and um, that they uh, you know, have a different uh, tension there. That's, that's really cool. But the action is very, very good. Access to the thumb studs is very good, whether you like to uh, you know, just flick it out with your thumb or do a reverse flick. Honestly, the leverage that you get and the positioning, the, the whole deployment experience is very good. Even the thumb stud texture and size is appropriate for this knife. So big fan of that. I, I do like the action a lot. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, it's about the same, honestly. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. Where's the PM2? There it is. You can see here that this is really just going to be a pretty darn easy carry experience. It's no longer than the Para 3. It's certainly nowhere near as tall and it's not super duper thick. Materials. What are we looking at here? S90V, that's great. Uh, you guys know I'm a huge fan of S90V. That's one of the um, most premium stainless steels that you can get on a pocket knife. And, and at this price point, it's definitely one of the most preferred stainless steels, right? As long as you have a little bit of experience sharpening, it, it can be a bit tough to sharpen, but once you get it down, I mean, in today's day and age, it's so easy to get a guided system with diamond stones. I mean, any, I mean, even yours truly, who I, I would consider myself to be a novice sharpener, can get a pretty darn good edge on something like this. And this is no slouch, by the way. This is something that I really like. Uh, about uh, this company, just my first experience here, it comes with a card that tells you not just the range, but the exact Rockwell hardness. 61.7 is phenomenal for S90V. This is not a joke. This is a serious blade. Holy moly. The edge, listen, the S90V does pretty well at 59. It's not M390, right? I think a lot of people still get confused about the Rockwell scale, thinking that it's sort of a static, like anything that's under 60 is bad and anything that's over 60 is good. No, it depends on the composition. M390 is not super great at 59, but S90V is all right. 5961 is about the range we normally see. This mf -er is at 61.7. That's hard. It, that's going to cut, right? It's not going to be super duper tough, but S90V is not meant to be a tough steel. Stainless insane edge retention, right? And honestly, for the tier of composition that this is in, you know, Maxim is, is definitely harder to sharpen in my experience. I, I don't mind S90V. Um, I like it more than M390. So, I mean, to get it at that level, I mean, you, you it's a, it's going to vary. Like, yours is going to vary just a little bit, plus or minus one, most likely. Um, but uh, that's just... That's just absurd. It's very cool. And it's just so cool that they tell you the exact rock wall hardness. Like, that's, we don't usually get that. So I, I like that a lot. I'm a big fan of that. Who is Pyrotech? These are folks that used to be, from what I understand, pretty high up at Kaiser. And they decided to go their own route. And what a, uh, what a first model. Wow. Uh, they, um, they obviously had their own vision. They had their own, you know, ideas and they wanted to implement them and they did. I mean, that's like just coming up to bat, a no name and just absolutely smacking it out of the ballpark. Uh, pretty cool. So, um, yeah, action's good. <laughs> I think that's what we were talking about is action. Now, I do want to, um, you know, kind of show you everything else once again that's on the inside. Just bear with me here um, so that I can get this off. Oh, I was pulling on the wrong side. Um, this, The other side will not come off once again unless you release that screw right there. But there are additional screws if you actually want to pull the liners out, um, if you want to adjust the pivot. So for those, um, obviously, we do want to do a hardware check. Um, so get out my tools. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. We're going to check the pivot with a T8 because I'm almost certain that that's what that is and I am correct. And then back here, I figure these must be T6 and they are, right? Um, so, and that other screw is also the screw that's holding in the, um, the, the, 
pocket clip over here. So if you flip it around, it's going to be the same thing on the other side. And then this, again, this filler tab um, for the clip just sort of pops out. But you can see how it's, <laughs> how it's actually being held in there. That piece, it's just sort of puzzle pieces in there and is lipped over the titanium. So once it's on, everything's held in place. So really, it's only if you want to do the extra disassembly steps right, that you'll need to do that. Most of what you'll ever have to do with this knife can be achieved by simply removing this one scale, um, which is which is cool. I mean, that you have enough access there that if you want to add a little bit of lubricant to the Omega Springs, which by the way is a very good idea, that will definitely increase the life of your Omega Springs. If you're concerned, I've heard Omega Springs break. They can. A lot of that occurs when the user does not properly lubricate um, the Omega Springs. So a, a good idea would be to, you know, periodically remove the scales and do that. Um, but it really, if you're, if you're ju just going to be doing regular maintenance, it is, uh, zero to one screws, <laughs> zero to one screw total that you would have to remove. So I wish they were T8, but you know what? I'll choke it down. I, I'm a big fan of, uh, the dis disassembly process being easy. I don't like things that are tricky to disassemble. That's honestly the number of times that I've, uh, like, I've cut myself, you know, just as often as anybody else who likes knives, right? Most of that has occurred during disassembly, during maintenance, because of some stubborn screw or some tricky process, right? I had to, the, the lamella literally gave me stitches. Um, so the easier that something is, the easier and the safer something is to disassemble and maintain, the better. So this is an A-plus in my book. I'm a big fan of it. I wasn't sure initially because I was having so much trouble getting that scale off until I realized it's just about the point of leverage. And for me, it was up here. Yours might be a little bit different. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness. Blade stock thickness on this guy. Whoops, we got we to gotta change this real quick. Oh, we got to probably up here would be a little bit better. Uh, okay, so I'm going to guess this is about 115 to 120 thousandths. Uh, it's actually a little bit less, 110 thousandths, not a thick blade stock at all. How about weight? So we have titanium steel liners, which is apparently, apparently like uh, 1.4116. That blade steel that CRKT uses sometimes, that's what they used for the frame here. Which is fine. That's a, that's a, as a support material, it's great. 4.16 ounces, which I don't think is bad. It's not a perfect ratio, right? But we are looking at some, you know, titanium scales, right? Not necessarily a teeny tiny knife. So yeah, uh, not bad. It just depends on what you're used to carrying there. All right. We've done the, all the measurements here. Let's move on to the meat and potatoes. Ergonomically, this is quite good. Something else I really like is when there are notches up here. This is something that I find myself doing a lot, is having my index finger up here on the blade and doing a draw cut. Now, this could be a combination of just an aesthetic thing and, you know, a, a, a nice little place for your index finger to make you feel like you've got a little more control over it. I really appreciate that, and I also like how it looks. This is the right size of knife uh, for making that type of cut easy, right? Whether you like to put over there. I mean, right here is just really, really ideal. In the standard grip, right, a hammer grip, it's pretty good. The pocket clip is milled and is knocked down at the edges, so I'm not going to call that much of a hot spot. It is somewhat tall, so you, you're going to know that it's there, but there's nothing that's like, oh my gosh, right? Any other grip or, you know, however you decide you want to hold this knife is honestly just really, really comfortable. And I love that the jimping is extended. So you have this big area where you can kind of decide where do I want to put my thumb to complement the index finger for the task at hand. It's a big deal there. Not often am I slipping off the spine of the blade because the jimping is not optimal. But every now and then I'm like, yeah, I wish it was up a little higher. I like this. It looks good. This is a very, very um, purpose-built knife, right? They have some, obviously, the enthusiast flair here. I mean, when it comes down to it, like, having a magnetic front scale is really cool. But what they're doing is allowing you to bypass the, uh, the, the normal, like, two-screw disassembly process, right? Great. Right, you call that a gimmick, right? I think the, the like the, the most the, the grouchiest of folks will will scream gimmick. Okay, um, but honestly, if you're watching this video, if you're watching anything on my channel, right, uh, it's most likely a gimmick is probably what got you interested in the knife world in the first place. I mean, past a certain tier of knife, that's what makes 
these knives interesting? Are, there, are, the, are these individual elements that separate them from your common buck 110s and all the other stuff that's no longer interesting to folks who have been around for a long time, right? If you like the buck 110, that's fine, right? Don't let me stir your pot. But yeah, I mean, that's what they're allowing you to bypass. And that's that's really, really cool. Um, but I mean, I'm just trying to identify for what it is. Um, that's That's fun. But on top of that, it really is a straightforward utilitarian you know, folding knife. They, they didn't really do anything else that was really fancy, crazy, right? It's good looking. It's bead blasted, right? Edges are nicely knocked down. The body is very ergonomic. The blade is very utilitarian. Um, but it, I mean, I'll tell you that there's just nothing ultra crazy here. I think it would have been really, I mean, these are made in China. Uh, and I, I know that whoever the OEM is, they're capable of doing a contoured titanium frame. That would have been nice to see, especially given the price, which we're going to talk about. Um, this is flat. Okay. Um, I, it would have been really cool to have a textured, contoured frame. Would have gone a long ways with me. Uh, the blade, it's a nice uh, semi-reflective tumbled finish, and it looks really good. Outside of that, there's just not a whole lot going on. I do appreciate that they kept everything off the blade outside of the blade steel, which is in a great spot. That's a great place to put the blade steel right here. That way it's there, but we don't have to look at it. No codes, no names, no logo. They put the octopus logo right here, which I think is fine. I think that looks good. It's just a good looking knife that's just not constantly having to remind you of its, you know, its name or its patent whatever or its website or it's what Microtech does where they print a book on the front of your knife. It's not doing that. You just get to enjoy it, right? Which after you buy it, that's kind of all you want to do is just enjoy it for what it is. Couple of standoffs back here again. Nothing, nothing ultra crazy. They didn't do a backspace or anything like that. Honestly, that might have like overcomplicated the idea. I think the standoffs are kind of necessary. Maybe love obviously that the clip is ambi, uh, so lefties can enjoy this. I mean, as it should be. We have an ambidextrous locking system, so yeah. Um, the locking system itself is super duper solid. I know people cringe when I don't wear gloves and do this, but I can tell you. Um, that uh, this company <laughs> clearly knows how to do a crossbar lock, so I wouldn't worry too much about lockup and solidity. Crossbar locks it very rarely fail. It's it's pretty rare. I mean, obviously, just like any other locking system, there's going to be sensational videos of them failing, right? But what you don't see is the other 99.999% of the same locking system not failing because it's much less interesting if the thing is working as it should. So... <laughs> It's, they know how to do it, is what I'm saying. Um, but, uh, yeah, the stop pin is located in its uh, traditional position right here. A little bit of shouldering. Absolutely no blade play up, down, left, or right. Absolutely solid, right? Um, and, you know, that's going to be the same whether the scales are attached or not because the internal liners are screwed together. The, the pivot is, is held, is, is underneath the scale, right? And, by the way, is there any play in the magnetic scale? I'm, I'm, I'm pinching both sides and moving back and forth, right? Now I'm going to pinch both sides and move up and down without uh, sliding my finger up the blade. That would be terrible. No. Man, the fitment is really, really good. <laughs> Honestly, you would think that it would be once you find the right leverage position, then it's, it's fine. But man, it, the tolerances are just right to allow you to get it off of there, but at the same time put it back on without any play. It's amazing that there's no, you're going to have to make sure that you don't get debris. If you take it off, make sure that you really blow it out good and you don't get any debris between the liner and the scale because otherwise you will get some crunchiness. You will, you, you'll, you'll feel that, right? There'll be some space in there, but no, as it, as it is, it's absolutely solid. Oh yeah. And the centering is uh, spot on. Like, I mean, it's, it hasn't, that hasn't moved, right? You can obviously adjust it by going into the pivot or whatever, but so how much does this cost? Okay, so the initial run was 280 bucks, which is, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's S90V and it does have some cool elements here, right? No milled backspacer, not a big deal. Not contoured titanium, not textured, anything like that. Eh, would have been nice to see, but it's not there. Um, the second run is 300 It's a little pricey. I got to be honest, I really, I was really expecting this thing to come in at 250 or less. So... I'm not like offended, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, write a bunch of stuff on a sign and go hold it up, you know, I'm not gonna boycott, I'm not gonna do that. It's just, it's just kind of pricey, right? 
it is cool though. And um, while we have seen magnets in the knife world, we've seen um, you know systems that allow for easier access to the internals. Right, that's kind of a popular thing right now. So do that. Um, this, this is, this, this is still pretty unique. It's very interesting. And me personally, I put a big emphasis on a ease of access when it comes to the internals. This is a good, safe way. Once you figure out the point of leverage, it's a good, safe way to get in to the knife. And considering it's utilizing Omega Springs, this is a huge benefit to this system in particular, right? Initially, I thought it might be a good idea to have some sort of lock or switch that you have to disengage before the scale will come off. But I, I wanna be very clear about this. Honestly, the amount of, the, of force that is keeping the scale on the knife tells me that it is almost impossible. Outside of such an incredible impact, I mean, what it would take to get this scale to accidentally come off is an enormous impact. I mean, you would, it would, you would have to throw this thing against the ground as hard as you possibly could. There's just no natural circumstance where this is going to come off, right? Um, I don't know if, you know, I mean, even holding this up to, uh, something like on the other side here, holding it up to a steel blade, I, I don't, I honestly don't think there's enough. I mean, I, you can't really see this, but I've got a steel, um, like a file cabinet over here. And there's just the magnetism from the other side of the scales is not enough to pull it off, right? But what's interesting is there's enough here that it will stick to things. Like I can actually hang this knife on the side of my file cabinet. I know you guys can't really see that. What's another, let's see if I've got something that's, that's steel where I can give it. Well, if you decide, if you're like right next to something that's steel and you want to hang it there, you can do that, right? I mean, if you've got like, a, a roll around like steel toolbox or something in your garage, you can just put that there, right? And in or if it's like on a surface, it, it's not something that's going to easily fall off, right? So if you're if you're doing something where you're going to need your knife again, and you don't want to put it all the way back in your pocket, it's kind of nice that it has those magnets. On the flip side of that, if you work in an environment where there's a lot of metal shavings and stuff like that, you might get some debris sticking to your knife. So. It's one of those things where it's not a universally good or bad thing. It just depends on what you do, right? I mean, any any knife with magnets in it is going to be a problem for people who work around like metal dust, right? Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's really it. This is cool. Uh, the price is a bit high, but it's definitely a fun one, right? Overall, I think that people who find these elements extremely attractive or very, very necessary or just very helpful for their occupation or just in general, right? Then yeah, this is easily going to be worth it, right? If you don't find these specific elements, you know, beneficial, then that price tag is going to look that much higher to you. So I don't, obviously this isn't going to be for everyone. Um, I'm very interested to find out what um, Pyrotech does in the future. I hope it involves magnets. Um, I, uh, I think that's, that's really neat. But as far as I'm concerned, this company's off to a really, really good start. This is huge. Thank you so much for doing this. And obviously, companies that provide additional hardware, especially additional sets of Omega Springs or an alternative uh, alternative tension of Omega Springs, that's that's a big bonus. I like that a lot. So that's neat. I'm glad they're uh, providing that stuff. So yeah, what a performer uh, for sure. This would be a super duper fantastic EDC knife for anybody who does decide to pick it up. So Good stuff from Pyrotech, good first knife. Like I said, if you're watching this on the day that I uploaded or just a couple of days after, you'll have a chance to pick up one of the second run. I'll link it in the description. The description. It'll be December 7th, I believe, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thanks again to Pyrotech for sending this in. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.